Welcome to the CN Environment videos. Today I want to talk to you about networks and micro communities. That's the first thing you see when you come to your timeline. Networks on top and communities a bit below. So let's examine these features in details. In your CN institution, in your CN channel, you probably deal with different kind of people, different kind of audiences. So you can divide them into networks. For instance, here I have a network called MOOCDIS Ambassadors. In this particular network we have volunteers who spread the information about the MOOC, welcome the newcomers and help them get into the platform and navigate the course. Right now this network count 107 members. You can see that for these micro communities I have tools here, posts, polls and events. So if I want to communicate with those 107 members I use those tools. Here you can see an alumni network. So if you are a school or a university or another academic institution and you have alumni, you can actually manage the community online through this alumni network. If you are a school, you probably deal with parents as well, so you can communicate with your students' parents but parents can also come to this network and communicate with you and exchange about uh, the, their child problem or the internship and so on. If you have external partners like partner enterprises or providers, you can also invite them into an external network and exchange some contents with them, but prevent them to access to other contents that you want to keep private. Micro-communities are in entirely different features because they are communities based on a common interest or on a common competence or common skill. Here, for instance, you see a micro-community called Dyslexia and it's a quite big one actually because it counts 457 members. And if I click here on members, I can see who are those people who belong to this community. If I click on this link, indeed, it's actually a specialized search engine to search for jobs and uh, it will propose me a series of jobs around the keyword dyslexia. And here you can see post. If I click on post, I can of course write uh, a post, but look at the visibility settings, you see that dyslexia is actually stressed, it's in blue, and that means that only the members of this micro community will get my post. And it's the same with Pulse and of course it's the same with events. This feature means that any participant of your courses can create his own or her own micro community based on a particular interest or on a particular skill. I'll give you an example. During the MOOC this, we didn't speak much about autism because we focused on learning disabilities. But some parents of autistic children created their own communities under the Autism Spectrum Disorders keyword. And uh, you see that they count 56 members and that they publish regularly post events and uh, polls about that subject that interests them particularly. I can also search for existing communities, for example, if I'm interested in taphonomy, I can type taphonomy and see if that tag already exists. And uh, I can also create the same tag in my own language, I could do it in French or in German, for instance, and have a community around that particular topic related to archaeology. And if I'm not interested in a group anymore, I can leave, just click on uh, more to display everything, click on the group you want to leave, edit and tick off the cross and it's done, you're out. When there is no more member, the group simply vanishes. You can save to make sure you are out of the group and uh, you can create your own as you wish. This kind of feature is a very important part of social learning because each and every member of your courses can create a community based on special skills and special interests and that's particularly motivating. Thanks for your attention and see you soon in another video.